Next lecture will be presented by Professor Mauricio Redis. Mauricio is graduated at the uni Federal University of the Rio State of Rio de Janeiro. He graduated in electrical engineer in 1984. In from 85 to 91, he worked as commissioning engineer at the Azea Promons Consortium at the Itaipu system. He was the product engineer at the Leather project at Itaipu plant. He got a master's degree by COP in 91. In his uh, doctor at the Berlin University since 96, uh, he started teaching at COP UFRG in 1997. Thank you, Christine, and sorry for this uh, bad for speaking badly because I'm a little bit uh, I'm a little bit uh, with a flu. I promise to be fast. Professor Antonio Carlos yesterday he started saying talking about uh, energy uh, de derivation and sort of instigated and left a uh, great responsibility for me to talk about how to do it and if that can be done and also not to lose the set the configuration not to lose the characterization of the half wavelength uh, characteristic and the task is even bigger if it's possible to have it multi-eternal uh, was yesterday because of Professor Antonio Carlos conviction you can do that multi-terminal that's going to happen soon but the two those two that are left for me is that and so wouldn't it be good to incorporate to a uh, half wavelength line the concept of flexible and C transmission systems to give capacity to control <coughs> an array of uh, response in time equivalent to its big competitor, which I believe is the equivalent in CC in the same uh, long distance. And also the thing that yesterday I talked that uh, initially I remember our dear Professor Portello. Initially, I'm somehow uh, uh, against the uh, waste of resources. I think that if we had uh, undertaken this size, it wouldn't be to be solving things about the low conversions and derivation of fractional powers in a line with a little bit more than half wavelength. This image has been following me since I started studying with Christina and Portella this odd line here. What I have seen since then, it uh, sort of uh, pleases me because from varying the no load line till its uh, load characteristic power and up to 50% uh, over tension, for the green line, it would be the current profile. For red, the ones would be the voltage profile. You see that with some good approximation, this helped me to think about how to develop some uh, piece of equipment. Imagine that a half wavelength line, whatever the load from zero to over current, I have at the end area one source of uh, power, one source of voltage, whereas at the central uh, area I have uh, PU, a uh, current source for each condition of load of the line. It is naturally that has been very well said. I just needed to say that trans the power that is transmitted by the line, just like a conventional line, equals to Terminal voltage is squared divided by impedance and the load angle of the line. Obviously, the line is stable because of a negative impedance because it's a little bit more than half wavelength. The electric equivalent is a little bit bigger than pi with the negative scene and naturally stable if you work with the voltage terminal voltage tension the receiving voltage in the around the 180 degree desynchronization of phases. Yesterday, well, just to remind you, also, I'll 
yesterday we've seen some curve is ranging, uh, changing the impedance of the line. It's a way, obviously, to change and control the power that passes by this line of a little more than half wavelength line. This formula say, know that when you do serious compensation or shunt or both, that this happens and that that we change the characteristic impedance of the line as well as its uh, electric length. Here are the limits <coughs> up to we can go with the energy drain. Here would be the limits we would go with the control of the flow of the main power of the line and other objectives that I would like to give to you now. To guarantee my job, obviously, I will not do as Antonio Carlos did yesterday, putting a der uh, derivation parallel to the shunt as if it was uh, impedance. I've worked with the power impedance guaranteeing my job. I have a fact as if it was a, con a shunt controlled current source or a serious fact as if it was a con serious controlled voltage source and the analytic studies that were done mainly in Professor Robson Diaz's thesis have shown some characteristics. There are several <coughs> documents and interesting aspects and unique aspects in this line to apply one or the other. But the fact is that I am here now with two features. I have to have derivation of energy and also have the control of the main flow of the line e using one single piece of equipment. Thus, thinking this way, just to not to waste too much time, an image that yesterday was shown with a certain uh, image different from this, because yesterday we had the characteristic not with use with the power electrons, but rather with the use of impedance, with a shunt impedance or, or a series impedance. And here I say those are shunt controlled uh, current source or uh, series voltage controlled source. The fact is that the yellow regions and those marked A, fact is those are regions where it is possible to drain or derive the active power of the line of uh, a little half, more than half uh, wa uh, wavelength with no too great, not too great influence on the main flow of the line. Uh, co conversely, uh, by region B, we have a normal sensitivity regarding the main flow of the line regarding some compensa reactive compensa capacity of our inductive uh, re reactive uh, volume. Um, thus, keeping just a variation of the angle, but for all points that my series or shunt is connected to, just to have an idea. 0.2 per units of uh, voltage amplitude in the fa series factor or 0 0.2 current in the line with a little more than half wavelength uh, in the case of a shunt, uh, uh, tap shunt, shunt tap. Uh, obviously in the shunt having of minus 90 degree regarding to the voltage, it is an inductive current. Uh, derivation with the shunt reactor in the middle of the line changes greatly the main flow in the line. Whereas a shunt capacitor in the middle of the line changes greatly the main flow in the line. And something similar with the series or inductors or capacitors at the end uh, part of the line. <coughs> Voltage profiles are uh, the other critical points. 
that were documented in Professor Robson's thesis. Here, just to remind you a little, just to emphasize that... The serious facts in the middle of the line would not be the most appropriate thing to use for the control of the main flow of the line. I can drain energy without a lot of influence. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to control with one shunt in the central area and investigate the possibilities of some energy drain as well. Finally, so I don't spend too much time analyzing graphs, there will be three types points to emphasize. The voltage profile and the transmitted power of the ha a little bit more than half a wavelength line is very sensitive or its correlation is too high regarding a f FACT shunt located in the central section of the line. In an FACT series is very much more effective in controlling the main power flow through this line when it is connected in the terminal sections of the line, both in the emission, emission and receptin, receptin, receiving ends. More, this is connected to the comment from yesterday. More than one tap shunt could be in the receiving terminal, for example, by doing a configuration with a multi-terminal arrangement using derivation, fractional active power derivation for the main flow. It's the same line that Portella used and the same line said uh, that was used yesterday for me too. I do not know how to design a line. I use the same line as well. That line that has that crazy thing from Professor, which is elliptic, they gave me that line for me to use it as well. These are two lines in a parallel scenario. And a loading conditions and adjusted flow to provide a profile without tap. A flow around 7 gigawatts on each of them. These begin like that, and now talking about how to investigate the possibility of a tap shunt. I use the technology, let us say, convert to three levels back to back. Intrinsically, there is a problem with the balance of voltages in both capacitors. In this arrangement back to back, as I mentioned before, as once I said it's a sh tap shunt, it will be controlled by current. And the side of the local power system, the local generating, our case is going to involve a local generation and a local load and the, the con with the contribution drain or injection of energy the positive power is the tap putting energy in the local system nowadays we have a better concept but i haven't done the simulation in a while i basically did this as this would be an aero generator park it shouldn't be anymore behaving just as a slave without providing support of frequency and voltage to a local network. I believe this would be impossible, unthinkable, to do just one injection in a power factor of one gigawatt of current. I believe the power electronic converters can do much more today. It's what we call machine control. It's something virtual, but we do not have time to talk about this today. The control as it is, is going to be shown here. I only have one tool in hand, which
which is the PK, PQ theory. I tried to do everything with it and have been able to do so, so far. Another PLL, which is a synchronism circuit for in case the converter number one, which is the converter which is connected to the half wavelength plus line. I compare its power. I have already tracked the fundamental component for positive sequency in this voltage where the tap shunt is connected and with it I have the phase angle for this positive a voltage of positive sequence and with that by calculating the power of the line with a little bit more than half a wavelength compare it with its reference as we saw a reactive power or a reactive support that for me means an imaginary instant imaginary power ca both capacitive or inductive so then I would do an instant calculus of the refer current reference that come for the PWM control of the current to conclude what it does is that through the supervision of the bus CC bus bar a b energy balance without knowing or without communicating although physically everything would be inside a, di a single digital controller without knowing about the reference power that is being ordered for the tap to inject in the local system without having that direct formation I use the supervision of voltage in the CC bus bar if energy goes out the energy using these capacitors inside the regulator control of the CC link I use the conversator number one to do the opposite tasks if it's unloading I'm gonna add energy if it's charging I remove energy the energy balance made inside the link the control is simple it's not coupled by the par coordinates from Clark we go to Park because these are sinoidal references and in Park this become DC values and this allows zero mistake for Z va DC values I go back with the compensation currents with re refeeding just adding here some something very specific for the converter used is the issue of the balance between voltages in the capacitor with C1 and C2 converter number two is this one here using with the same synchronism we current leaving the tab compared with its reference active in both reactive uh, creating then the value reference values for current in the tab nothing new for you and then we repeat the issue of control PWM control for current now series it's the same controller you can see that the entry values are the same it's just that now the tap series tap the converter number one emulates a volt a control voltage source so I need inside this controller to create a voltage source which is controlled depending on the angle of the main current in the line of a little more than half a wavelength this is going to be repeated in the slides but it is exactly the same controller shown previously for the tap shunt so, so we have a single slide so I can use it in my class I did this here you have a synchrony control on the, the line current and not on the voltage anymore because I need 
to do this with a certain angle which is orthogonal to this current a voltage current or in phase using the real power variable and imaginary variable as well this is basically the only difference between the tap series controller and the tap shunt controller regarding converter number one we saw that for our happiness this was a surprise the same control used to equalize C1 and C2 capacitors in the NPC converter it's also effective when we change the controller for a PWM or voltage controller and not for a PWM voltage uh, current controller this is in series but it's exactly the same as the shunt as well as this is for tap series but it is exactly the same controller for tap shunt and now looking at the system to be simulated where I have the task to control the main flow and to do the derivation I'm going to show two or three results of these simulations referring to the tap shunt and located in the central region of the line I believe it's not exactly the middle, it's a uh, hundred kilometers forward or backwards I don't even remember the reason because I, I was looking at this yet yeah, last night, I was a little bit tired uh, and then in this simulation this series of events up until 12 milliseconds of simulation where we have we're careful how, how to energize the tap shunt and all the details using pre-insertion in the resistors when you're energizing the half wavelength plus line the bypass of pre-insertion resistors closing of the receiving end energization of facts shunt only the high transformers with a thousand kV with pre-insertion resistors with the energization of the converter 2 and the shunt transformer using the local load everything being prepared to start to release the back-to-back -back converter NPC and then using energization unblocking of the firing of converter 2 in the local load bypassing of the pre-charging resistor to this was done with a precharged resistor, the CC link, so we do not have a rush current, which is very high on the CC link. We bypass it, leave it normal, and then we fire the converter number one. After that, we fire converter number two, and then we start to change the references everything starts with a reference meaning the converter 2 is going to provide zero for the local load and after that at this moment 3 milliseconds it starts to give 500 megawatts so it starts to drain from the line 500 megawatts and then the order power or the main flow of the line that naturally starts around 7 and we do the energization with uh, using 7 as a reference we go for another gigawatt and then it goes to its seal and maintaining at this nominal value we do a re power reversion in the local system instead of injecting 500 megawatts in the local system we start to drain 500 megawatts with a step function, a step change to inject 500 megawatts. After that, to go, it goes back to draining 250, and after that, it goes down in the main flow from 8 giga to 6 giga. 
everything is there. Both the flow in the receiving terminal and the emission terminal from TL1, TL1 sending receiver, TL2 sending receiver. This is how their behavior for our happiness it worked in during the simulation. Simulation, everything is great. Everything works. All the energization that is behind, we could, using those criteria, be doing a good energization in the tap without thinking a lot about the main flow with the line. What is interesting is that we're going to see this afterwards. This guy in the middle of the line did some transients with characteristics that are relatively critical, uh, sub-damped. Uh, we could not get this in, s in the serious one, as I'm going to show. I'm almost ending. This is just a sequence of confirmation that everything happened in the main flow because this plus this and plus this, sorry, this happened system which is confirming the maintained load in its nominal power generating needs to provide more because tap was putting in the line and draining from the line the local system behaved very well without creating many problems. What's curious is that I was there with all these controls basically to control the main flow my converter no one for the tap shunt had to alter its reactive compensation to change the active power uh, in the transmission line and here we have the active component uh, for converter 1 to address the imposed power order in the control to be drained or injected in the local system. Just to confirm what we could get with that relatively simple strategy, the equalization of both capacitors in the CC link. Now going finally, I'm almost finished to a series facts connected to 450 kilometers far from the sending end terminal, so far from the generating terminal. With all the parameters and everything that was simulated before for shunt, what's different now is instead of being self-transformer shunt, you have three transformers, one primary connected in the series at this distance inside the half wavelength. I'm not going to go into details, they are similar, these events are similar within a relatively similar amount of time to the previous one and just so the curves are not too polluted, Professor Robson decided to include what happens in the controlled line and not also the power in the parallel and uncontrolled line, the half wavelength line. We can see here, as I anticipated, we still could not get the control and I don't know if this is our mistake or it's because the, this line f is m more difficult to work when it's in series, but the fact is we noticed a uh, much more oscillating or changing behavior when we are using the, all the controllers with all the events draining and injecting power as well as controlling the main flow. Here you can see the same characteristic once again for injecting and draining 500 megawatts in the local system. Of course at Bihor you have the power order from 7 to 8 and after here the main flow needed to drop from 8 to 6 and this is controlled. Just to compare, this together with this is the same simulation 
a final simulation just to compare we have inhibited the control in the main flow of the line for the same controller we just have inhibited uh, the control of the main flow, these are two values of control that needed to be zero and then we drained and injected power in the local system, meaning with a half wavelength plus line without controlling the main flow and the behavior of the flow in the half wavelength line was this just to compare once again just three items for you since I believe I have a lot of faith this half wavelength plus line have can be controlled in the same way as an HVTC system can provide and more with the advantage of not being literally point to point there are some restrictions but it's not a point-to-point -point, such as an aged VTC system and the indications that when we want to control the main flow and do the derivation let's do this with a shunt facts in parallel when it's in the central section of the line or do this with a series facts when we are talking about the terminal sections of the line and this is just to add what was already very well said yesterday by Professor Antonio Carlos Christina has a lot more than I do Antonio Carlos remembered Professor Portella Christina has three times more uh, the amount of publications with the professor but I wanted to list for you just a couple of them because this is going to be available for you so some articles that we were we could do together with Professor Portella regarding the topic discussed today they are not many, just six or maybe fourteen articles because this is an advertisement for our, our book so only 14 articles up until this moment about this topic and with that thank you very much Good morning, I'm Alessandro from Furnas. Did you assess the use of facts since you had installed equipment to help to extinguish the secondary arc for a single pole connection? Excellent question. At that time, Alessandro, I don't know if you remember about Dr. Gilson who left us prematurely. I believe he had intention of going to the academic stay in the academia but he eventually went to the market he worked in a project we did together with Thais it used to be Nova Trans now it's called Thaisa and we thought about a statcom for secondary arcs we thought about statcom it's the same thing it's the same thing thank you for your question I'm going to advertise a power electronic this converter here I have in hands the current I would like for it to drain the way it is here you have the reactive variable looking at the main flow for the half wavelength plus line and the active component due to exchange components imagine this is just reactive so this is a statcom with a reactive reference regulating the voltage a transfer trip in a line is going to tell us the circuit breaker in phase C is opened 
with this transfer trip. I'm going to look at it and my control is going to receive this information. Phase C is open. Let me look at this current. Oh, it's not okay. This, the current is not extinguished. Phases A and B. I'm going to do a single phase rectifier, taking energy from NAB and putting a counter current on phase C. And after that, on I, apparently the secondary arc has gone, so I release the transfer tri trip to close the monopole connection, single pole connection. How long does it take for the the whole tripping until you reduce the current? I don't know. We're, did it, is he still having ideas? Well, there are some simulations, but I, d I did not use these articles. Something talking about R&D, but I don't know if Ty is uh, treat this as confidential. If we can stay within the schedule, this would be our lunch break to respect the schedule for the afternoon. So thank you very much, Professor.